Protecting the finish of your metal roof before, during, and after installation is one of the most important things that you can do to preserve the life and look of your product. Today we are talking with Mark Hansen from Polyfilm about a special product designed to help you do just that. What's up guys, welcome to Q&A Mondays. I'm Thad Barnett, subscribe if you're new. We release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. Well, as I mentioned, protecting your metal roofing finish is really important. And one of the things that helps you do that is protective film. And we're gonna be talking about what that protective film is, some different use cases for it, um, and things to remember during, before, and after installation. So today we have Doug Markle from Sheffield Metals and Mark Hansen from Polyfilm, who's gonna discuss with us a little bit about protective film. Thanks guys for being here. Mark, tell me a little bit about what protective film is and why do we use it? Hi, Thad. Well, first of all, I appreciate the, the time today uh, that you offered me on this platform. Uh, first of all, my name is Mark Hansen. I'm with, uh, been with Polyfilm America for 16 years. I'm the director of sales here. And at Polyfilm, um, we manufacture and sell surface protection films. We are um, a privately owned company, uh, started in 1972, and we actually have six global manufacturing uh, locations around the world. And we are also a supplier to Sheffield Metals, as you know. Now, getting back to your the first question, you know, what is protective film and why do we use it? So. Temporary protective film is usually a thin layer of film, usually anywhere from two mils to five mils thick. And then that film is usually coated with an adhesive system. Either it's a water-based acrylic adhesive system or a rubber solvent based or a, sol or a solvent acrylic based. You know, protective film was first used by the Japanese to protect products during transportation. Um, so today we generally use protective film to protect it from scratching and marring. And the reason why we're talking today is, you know, particularly about painted uh, metal surfaces. So protective film is used to protect the painted metal during fabrication processes, during bending, roll forming. So really, the general thing is to protect those panels from manufacturing to the end user so they can strip it off and have a, a clean finish. Mark, are there different types of protective film specifically designed for protecting painted metal finishes? So, you know, there's a lot of different types of protective films. Um, generally, uh, you know, most films use a, a backing film that's uh, either a low density poly polyethylene or a medium density polyethylene and sometimes a high density polyethylene. Um, the difference in those base layers of films are you know, low density film is usually just your everyday uh, protective film that's usually applied with a water-based acrylic adhesive. Uh, this is great for your flat sheets. Um, again, this is really what we supply to the Sheffield Metals location. Now, if you're using, uh, if you're going through any kind of heavy roll forming, uh, we will certainly recommend a high strength film. And this film has about a 600% elongation to really help protect the the panel as it's being roll formed through the process. I mean, and here's a, an example, just a little show and tell. Um, you can see this is generally for the metal building panel industry. You can take this film and stretch it quite a bit without it breaking. So as you can see, it's made to go through that heavy roll forming and stamping and punching um, and, and to protect your panel all the way through. Um, you know, also there's some other films like, uh, like a natural rubber adhesive system where this is generally used in the appliance industry. And this is generally the laser films that uh, are applied to the stainless steel. And you know, here's an example of some of our uh, laser film that generally is applied to stainless steel. You know, the appliance market is really big. If you ever buy a, um, a stainless steel refrigerator, I'm sure the first thing you do, you bring it home and you peel it right off. Again, just protect it from stamping, marring, and, and uh, punching. Can you tell me a little bit about the manufacturing process? Uh, you mentioned a few different types of film, but tell me what the manufacturing process is like. The manufacturing process is we take low-density polyethylene film, and it's usually corona-treated. So when something is corona-treated, it's actually roughed up. 
as if you were sanding a windowsill before you paint it. So by corona treating the film, you rough up the film so the film is now ready for the adhesive to adhere to it. So we're taking uh, the corona treated film, we're applying it with either a water-based acrylic adhesive or a rubber-based adhesive or a solvent acrylic adhesive. Now, um, there's many different types of ways you can apply adhesive to the film. There's Meyer rod coating and gravure coating. So Meyer rod coating is the film is actually dipped into a pan of adhesive and then uh, a Meyer rod, a special rod, skims off the adhesive to give it that nice clean uh, lay down on the, on the film. And then there's uh, gravure coated. The adhesive is actually dropped onto the film in little droplets. That's where gravure coating is. Um, that's the process called gravure coating. And it's a much rougher lay down. And going back to uh, specifically to metal panels, is there a uh, industry guideline or recommendation as far as how long film should be left on a process panel before it's removed? Generally, if the film is going to be stored uh, indoors, uh, we can say 12 months indoors in a warehouse. Uh, that's no problem. But if the film is going to be exposed to any kind of UV or uh, outdoor elements, we generally say, you know, take that film off as soon as possible. But you can rec we if we know that the film will be exposed to UV, we do offer UV additive films where it could be a maximum of 90 days uh, out in the sunlight. So generally, that's very important knowing beforehand what exactly the film is going to be exposed to. But if they're out there on the job site and they're using a UV film, you know, it's usually good for at least 90 days out in the sun. If it's not a UV film, we strongly, strongly recommend peeling that film off as soon as possible. In addition to knowing the potential UV exposure, uh, to the particular type of film. I imagine it's pretty important to know, you know, what the film is going to be used for, what the fabrication process going to, is going to be like of that finished product. Why is it so important to know how or what the fabrication process will be um, when the film actually encounters that? We need to know exactly what that film is going to uh, withstand um, at all times. So we need to know up, up front, is the film going to be roll formed? Is it going to be stamped? Is it going to be laser cut? Is it going to be uh, exposed to any kind of UV? Is it going to be exposed to heat? That's a big uh, issue that we deal with in the metal roofing and um, uh, metal cladding business, where they're actually doing uh, walk-in coolers. Um, so a lot of those uh, products are exposed to maybe 200 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit for a matter of, you know, anywhere from 30 to 60 seconds, which we need to know that beforehand. That's why it's so important that uh, we know everything that that film is going to withstand. Because if you don't use the right film for the right application, you can, um, you can have certainly quite a mess. So Mark, you know, you know that Sheffield uh, deals with a lot of painted uh, material. Is it important to know about the paint system and the gloss type on the material before we recommend putting a film on it? Yes, absolutely. Uh, gloss level, especially uh, in this day and age, I, I find more and more customers going with the lower, lower gloss system, which becomes harder and harder for the film to adhere to. So just so you know, uh, some, something with a low gloss adhesive I'm sorry, a low gloss paint system is going to take a very, very high tech film to adhere to that. So when you have a low gloss paint system under a microscope, there's a lot of hips and valleys and that film has to adhere to those, the tips of those valleys. Um, and again, with a very high gloss uh, paint system, something similar like this, you know, very high gloss black, you're going to need just a very light tack protective film. Um, and you see this a lot in the signage industry. Um, so knowing the gloss level is, is so important, especially when you're dealing with um, some of the uh, Kynar paint systems that we're seeing today. Also, the crinkle coat um, that we're seeing today, it's, it's very tricky to adhere to those systems. Uh, and we do have to make custom adhesive systems to um, actually get the film to adhere. You know, some other great examples are, you know, like this um, Star Bright that you see, like for uh, truck panels or fenders. Now, this is very high gloss. 
but it's a very textured surface. So that film is going to have to withstand or adhere to the tips of, of these uh, uh, indentations where you see. So it's all very, very important that we always ask and, and the customer always tells us um, what type of gloss or what type of uh, gloss level we're going to encounter. That's why we always, always ask for samples of the substrate beforehand because a lot of customers will give us a substrate and we recommend a film and then, you know, years down the road, they've changed paint suppliers and they won't tell us. And then we have an issue where either now the film is sticking too much or the film is falling off. So that's is all very important information to know beforehand. Like any slight change that the customer is making to their system, they really need to let the protective film supplier know. And I know protective film always tends to be an afterthought to people and most customers, but it, it's really an important part of your process in protecting your product. Yeah, a quick follow-up, I guess, and going in an opposite direction, we're also starting to see uh, an increased demand for unpainted material, uh, specifically like bonderized, or, or we call it paint grip. Mm -hmm. Is there a film application for material like that? I'm sure, yeah, we, yes, we can certainly recommend the film for that. Again, I would need, we would need samples first. Samples. And that's how we always start the process. Okay. Yeah. Usually a 12 by 12 sample of the panel. Um, we send it up to our lab. And again, we have a great world-class lab up in our facility in Hampshire, Illinois. And then we would recommend um, at least two or three different products and then send out sample rolls uh, from there and then let the customer make uh, the call. Like, okay, I like this a little too high, a little too low. Um, so that's generally how we start everything. But I would love to see those samples. So going back to Sheffield's application, you know, if someone installs um, panels on a roof or installs flashing um, and say forgets to take the film off um, for a period of time, what can someone do if film is left on for too long? If the film is left on too long, um, and it obviously, like you're saying, it's already mounted and, and installed to the, the building or the roof system, um, unfortunately, you know, what we recommend is heat. Uh, so I would take a heat gun to kind of on that flashing, and that would help to release the adhesive, not from the film, but re release the adhesive from the panel, and it would eventually slowly come off. Um, let's say somebody had panels um, that were not installed and they were left out in the sun, um, my recommendation would be bring those panels um, into a warehouse inside immediately, let them sit for a few days and get that ambient temperature in. And then slowly but surely that film should, should come off uh, pretty evenly. Uh, Mark, is there anything besides uh, whether it's UV or temperature, something like uh, an oil coat or any sort of lubricants that could get onto the surface of the metal? Anything else that can negatively impact the performance of the film on the surface of the material? Uh, yes, it definitely. Uh, we always recommend, you know, when you're applying film, usually on a cut to length line, uh, we recommend that that coil is as clean as possible, uh, free of any debris, dust, um, you know, it definitely lubricant um, it can definitely react with the adhesive system and sometimes react obviously in a bad way where the adhesive actually will transfer from the film to the panel, then you have a real mess. Um, I've seen instances where, you know, it could be a, 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 dirty, a, a dirty warehouse or a dirty um, uh, plant where there's just a ton of dust, a ton of debris, and then that debris gets trapped between the film and the actual panel. And as you know, sometimes these panels are getting hit with a 600 ton press and that there could be a small dust particle, a small cardboard powder particle that could really indent that steel or that painted metal. And then you have a defect. So getting that panel as clean and dry as possible is, is so important. And again, free from any lubricants. Um, so there's not any kind of reaction with the lubricant and the adhesive system. Yeah, and that's a good point is actual application, whether it's a, a metal manufacturer, a fabricator, a roll former, why is it so important for the protective film to be applied properly? 
Again, great question. So the film, uh, really, it's so important for that film to have an extremely flat lay down on the panel. Um, what you want is uh, you want it to be as flat as possible. You don't want any wrinkles or creases or bubbles in the film because, as you know, uh, a bubble or a crease could fold over on itself. And then once again, when it's hit with a press, it'll make an indentation in that, in that, in that steel. Um, this is huge in the uh, appliance industry where you just have to have a perfectly flat lay down. And also in the, the roofing industry, um, some things that we do to recommend – uh, to get a perfectly flat lay down is uh, the use of a bowl roll or a banana roll. So a bowl roll, the film will go from the major protective film, then pass over the bowl roll. And what it does, it, it's, it smooths out all the wrinkles and pushes all the wrinkles of the film to the side. And this way you have a perfectly flat lay down from the film onto your panel. And sometimes it's so perfect, the customer can't even see that there's film on the panel, which, which is great. Um, but obviously, you know, sometimes it, when it's so good, they can put the panel up and you don't want it to stay there, you know, a year from now, but having that, having that smooth, smooth lay down, um, and application is, is, is very key. So Mark, what differentiates polyfilm from your competitors in your marketplace? Mm, I'm glad you asked that. Um, so like I said, polyfilm has been around since 1972. We are a privately family owned business. Um, all that we do is surface protection film. We don't get into any other kind of industries at all. Uh, we have six global manufacturing locations around the world uh, with many distribution centers around the world as well. Here in the US, we have manufacturing uh, in Hampshire, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. And we also have a distribution center here in Kennesaw, Georgia also one in Montgomeryville, Pennsylvania. And then also we service uh, the Mexican market uh, with our distribution center in Monterey, Mexico. Again, we supply the automotive industry, stainless steel, painted metals, also the plastics industry uh, with a di very different type of film. Um, we can offer any type of uh, printing on the film. You know, we do um, directional painted arrows, something like that. Definitely when you're dealing with metallics, um, if you wanted your company logo on the film, we can certainly do that. We could put Sheffield metals, no problem. Uh, we can do perforations. Uh, this is huge in the appliance industry where we can perforate the film, uh, along the web and across the web. Um, you've probably seen this when you get a ref refrigerator. So it'll just be, it'll be perforated. So you can put the badge on like Whirlpool or Mana and then, uh, put the film back. But, uh, you know, again, we're, like I said, we're solely dedicated to uh, protective film. Our lab is definitely world-class. Any type of uh, panel that you have, I'm sure we can find a um, protective film to protect it. So, again, we have uh, 10 dedicated sales reps um, that are polyfilm representatives um, all across North America, and we'd love to um, help you out in any way. All right, appreciate it. Thank you so much, Doug. Thanks for jumping on the episode. Glad to have you as always. Mark, glad we could finally connect and get this episode out. I, I certainly learned a lot, and I hope uh, our viewers learned a lot as well. Hopefully we can get out to a manufacturing facility one of these days and, and do a plant tour. I think that would be really, really awesome as well. So Mark Hansen, thank you very much from Polyfilm. Comment down below if you have any questions. Love to answer them for you. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. And as always, I'm Thad Barnett, and we'll catch you next time.